430 years challenges in Asian botany. And as a start of our general lecture, we will sing the national anthem of the Republic Indonesia. We would like to request you all to rise. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please be invited the Dean Faculty of Forestry to be on the stage for his welcome remarks. Please welcome Insinyur Sigit Sunarta Eshut MP PhD IPU. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh <tuh> Salam sejahtera untuk kita semuanya Selamat pagi, good morning We would like to express our sincere welcome Especially to Professor Dr. Paul Kessler Our distinguished guest speaker in today's lecture And the director of Hortus Botanicus Leiden Distinguished uh, Dean of uh, from Agro Science in uh, Universitas Gajah Mada, also invited particip participant from forestry agencies in Yogyakarta, and all student and lecture uh, lecturer of Universitas Gajah Mada. First of all, let us pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, our God, who gave us life and the opportunity to the attend this. Uh, general lecture. In today's lecture, we have very special guests coming from Leiden University, uh, the Netherlands. Thank you, Pak Professor Dr. Paul Kessler, who is willing to share out, uh, your valuable work and expertise to increase awareness across the globe, especially in ASEAN countries and more specifically in Indonesia concerning the biodiversity and challenge to save our nature. Professor Paul Kessler has spent many years in studying the taxonomy of primary forest species in Kalimantan and some part of Indonesia and currently also working closely with uh, Universitas Gajah Mada in supervising our PhD student, both in Faculty of Forestry, also uh, Faculty of Biology, Universitas Gajah Mada. Ladies and gentlemen, Leiden University has founded in 16th centuries and has long history in developing uh, science and technology as well as social humanitarian 
One of the iconic sites of Leiden University is the existence of the Hortus Botanical Hortus Botanicus Leiden as the oldest botanical garden in the Netherlands and has many plant collection from many parts of the world, including Asia. We want to learn the history, the importance, and the management of the botanical garden from uh, Professor Paul Kessler and hopefully inspire us uh, in here at UKM to think deeply and manage seriously our vegetation in Universitas Gajah Mada like uh, Hortus Botanical Garden do. There is uh, vegetation a part of our culture to respect the nature and inspire future generation. <coughs> Faculty of Forestry in this year will celebrate 60 years of uh, anniversary and we are currently challenged by the fact that our biodiversity is declining. Climate change is more alarming and our economic growth is demanding more resources to be exploited. So we need to increase our awareness and find innovative solutions based on science, culture, and, uh, and nature without harming our nature and uh, future generation. <coughs> on behalf of Faculty of, uh, faculty of Forestry Universitas Gajah Mada, uh, we express again our gratitude to the distinguished speaker and all the participants, and please enjoy today's lecture. Thank you. Wabillahi taufik wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ladies and gentlemen, it's our honor to have a lecture from Hortus Botanicus Leiden. And ladies and gentlemen, please give a big round of applause for Professor Dr. Paul Kessler. Okay, Mas, Mas Bima. And to begin the discussion, I would like to invite Insinyur Atus Sabunin Eshot MAGR PhD to chair this discussion, please. Okay, thank you, Dian. Good morning, everybody. Our Honorable Professor, Professor Paul Kessler, our respected Dean, Vice Dean, Professor, colleagues, our student, undergraduate, master and doctor student of Faculty of Forestry, Faculty of Biology, and others who join in YouTube. Uh, we are lucky today we have Professor Kessler, he is a director of Hortus Botanicus Leiden. He is Germany, completed master and doctor in Germany. Of course, he can speak Germany, <laughs> but he also can speak Bahasa Indonesia. And Saya coba, huh? <laughs> And that's language. He works more than 15 years in one research in Kalimantan and establish some arboretum in Indonesia, like in Tadulako Arboretum, then Brau Arboretum, and become uh, advisor in some uh, arboretum in Indonesia, like when I said until now. And his expertise, he likes very much uh, systematic of Asian family, Adonase, Nepentase, Orsidase and Pilantase. Our student keep and conserve living specimen is not easy. Make people interestingly 
to botanical garden is not easy but professor Kessler can do it can manage it please kita beri tepuk tangan yang meriah kita sambut profesor Paul Kessler the time is yours Terima kasih banyak Pak Autos. Uh, selamat pagi everybody. Uh, I think I should uh, talk in English uh, because then you are used also to English. So uh, and my Indonesian is probably not so good as yours. Uh, so uh, um, that's the reason I uh, I'm here. Again, very, very thanks uh, to all of you, especially uh, the deans uh, and uh, inviting me here. Uh, I remember my last visit here in 2020 and I was in the same room actually and also with so many students and I'm really glad that after the uh, COVID pandemic uh, still we are able to meet each other personally. Um, my interest, uh, Paatus already told you, is very much uh, connected uh, with uh, Indonesia and Indo Indonesian flora. But uh, not only my personal interest, but also of my institute, the Botanical Garden in Leiden University. And the reason uh, we are here, or e I am also here, is actually that the uh, president of our uh, university and many other deans uh, of our uh, uh, university visited your um, visited UGM, made new MOUs and MOAs, especially also with bi biology, but with many other institutes. And I'm very happy uh, that I can join. The Botanical Garden is one of the um, uh, major institutions in the uh, in Leiden University, and actually also one of the oldest one because the university was founded in 1575, and the garden already in 1590, so 15 years after uh, the foundation of the university. That means actually already in those times. Uh, people were convinced that it was very important to have one. And luckily, until now, it was never separated from the university. And that is uh, very important uh, because I think uh, Botanical Garden, Aborita, Herbaria have ma very much to deliver for new modern um, science. Next one. So there is, of course, a long history of exploring plants uh, uh, in Europe, and uh, that uh, was mainly uh, botanical gardens, but also private nursery, and they play a vital role. And of course, and that is probably a little bit more of a negative uh, aspect, is of course at that time the colonialism. So that people tried from Europe to look in new uh, countries, in new, um, whether in Europe, South America, Africa, and uh, uh, so looking for new possibilities. And that created, of course, uh, always an interest of, of course, also on exotic species, because we have a saying, uh, certainly, uh, that the grass of your neighbors is always greener than your own grass. So you would like to look at other people. Next one. So especially here for the Indonesian uh, part is, of course, the VOC in the uh, 17th to the 19th uh, century was very essential. Next one. So even in those times, of course, uh, you could uh, 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 see that especially uh, the um, Netherlands were very uh, interested in uh, many uh, different spices, chenke and nutmeg and so on. So that made, you could make money of, uh, out of it. So that was a w uh, one uh, major interest. Next one. Or Pala and all these kind of uh, various things uh, which are really important and actually are still important now. It is not so that it was only important in the 17th century now. Also the spices are very important by, uh, important by now and of course are globally sold and have uh, quite an important part or play an important part uh, in the economy. Next one. We start a little bit uh, with the history of our botanical garden. Uh, the first pri prefect, of course, at that time, every, every name was in Latin or director, was Clusius. 
and he already uh, collected many plants uh, and in this time of course the gardens were usually used for medicinal plants so uh, not other aspect but our first director Clusius collected actually also plants without medicinal use and included the uh, tulip and other things like tomatoes, sugarcane, and he even published something about the fern Trinaria from Southeast Asia. You see that uh, tr uh, fern very often growing also in the cities on the trunk of trees. So that is the reason also we call us uh, also directly from the beginning, not a medicinal plant garden, but a botanical garden. Next one. We are very lucky in the Netherlands because uh, 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 the city was not destroyed do during the Second World War uh, by the Germans and uh, so also our university library and uh, all these and our buildings of course and so on and even our garden was not destroyed during that time only one tree was felled by the in inhabitants of Leiden because it was a very cold winter but uh, the uh, inhabitants uh, are still uh, were but still are very proud of the garden so they really kept it intact so that is the reason that in our library we have many uh, old drawings lists books and so on on the history of that p period so you see here uh, actually the first garden um, and uh, uh, but what you also see is actually uh, animals like the crocodile and so on and that means actually also in near in the neighborhood there was seemingly an exhibition of exotic uh, animals next one of course in uh, during the the uh, um, centuries uh, the uh, ch it was a very big change in f caring for the plants and this is one of our greenhouses and that is of course if you have to keep um, a species from uh, not from Europe but outside Europe you need in the winter time heating and so on so that means that uh, we have to develop greenhouses and probably you know the Netherlands are the biggest or the country with the highest uh, amount of horticultural activities and practically all import and export of plants coming from Kenya, from uh, South America, from Thailand, whatsoever, is going through the Netherlands and then distributed again into Germany, to uh, England and so on. So uh, they know very well how to, to uh, build greenhouses and to keep plants uh, well. Next one. So for us, of course, uh, if you are looking at plants, what is very important is the geography, is the location, is the climate, is the history, and you have to have a mission or a vision, because if you don't have that, you cannot sell it, uh, not to your, your superiors, not to your university, not to politicians, not you, to your city, and so on. So if you do not have that, please start with that. Next one. So if you are looking at the gardens within um, uh, Indonesia uh, or uh, then uh, and in, um, uh, in Asia in total, you see we are organized usually at Bot Botanical Garden in uh, the BGCI, uh, Botanical Gardens, uh, um, oh, I've forgotten the abbreviation, sorry. But there are more than uh, uh, 4,000 uh, gardens in the world registered with BG BGCI, Conservation International, so sorry. Uh, and uh, we, uh, I looked up in their gata database and we see, you see, one garden in, in uh, Brunei, 16 in ga uh, gardens in Malaysia, Papua New Guinea, four gardens, Philippines, 15, and Singapore, two. And in Indonesia, actually, you have five gardens, uh, what we call here uh, Kebun Raya, of course, Kebun Raya, Bovovadi, 
Bogor, Bali, uh, Chibodas, and so on. But in the last years, actually, more gardens are established, like uh, nearby Balikpapan. I have, because uh, in the last years, I was not traveling too much in Indonesia, so I haven't seen them, but I have been in contact with some, especially the one in Balikpapan, because that was also my interest. So you see, for such a, a big country, you have a relatively low number of botanical gardens. And I would advise, uh, even if you, um, uh, uh, that you, uh, if you do not have, but you have here in, in UGM, <laughs> establish at least uh, the, like uh, UGM um, uh, Arboreta, or which are specialized botanical gardens, and try to uh, have them registered in the BGCI database. Next one. If you are looking at Europe, then uh, I uh, know very well my colleagues because uh, I already um, in, in the botany part for more than 35 years. Um, and uh, I have looked up a little bit um, uh, what is the interest of other uh, um, countries in, in within Europe. Um, so uh, what, what it, does it mean? Like in Belgium, they have 29 gardens. FM means flora malisiana, uh, so uh, so a broader broader flora than Indonesia uh, alone. But one of the biggest part uh, of flora malisiana is uh, Indonesia. So there is not probably some interest in the biggest one in Meise. In France, there are 98, but there is interest which I know from Nancy, but practically not, nothing from the others. Uh, in Germany, uh, which I know much better, of course, personally, is with more than 100 uh, gardens, and there is very few interest. Göttingen is one of one. You are also uh, um, uh, have been there, uh, studying there. Uh, great, uh, in Great Britain, of course, uh, there are uh, at least uh, uh, two major players, uh, Kew Gardens and Edinburgh. They are really very regularly also coming to Indonesia doing research together, especially with uh, Herbarium Bogoriense and Keboraya Bogor and so on. So uh, there's certainly, uh, and they have also very big collections, living as well as Herbarium collections. Netherlands is, of course, a very small country. We have 26 uh, registered uh, uh, gardens. And uh, what we have done in the Netherlands, because we are so small, we have decided to concentrate the collection, some uh, the collections of the gardens to some major points. So, like Utrecht is mainly interested in Middle and South America. Uh, Leiden is uh, very interesting in so Southeast Asia, uh, and Delft is for economic plants. That are the three botanical gardens still part of universities. The rest of the 26 or 23 are not. Um, university connected anymore, but there are kind of private association friends gardens, but they still do uh, the, uh, not so much uh, research activities, but they still do curatorships of their, their collection, and if you want to use it as for your research, it is no problem at all. FM is Flora Malaysiana, so that is a is a, a flora uh, starting from southern Thailand, Malaysia, Fili uh, Philippines, Singapore, um, Indonesia, and uh, Papua New Guinea. Yeah. Um, so uh, can you one back? Sorry. Uh, you see, in 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 my garden, uh, we have some in, uh, special interest in orchids carnivorous plants, hoya dechidia, edible plants, ferns, but also bulb families like the tulip, and that is, of course, of history. Uh, we, uh, uh, we, uh, are very, we have practically every year a um, big exhibition in the spring where we show special families or special genera which are correlated to the bulbs, whether that is orchids, tulips, hyacinth, daffodils, and so on. And of course, we are not the Kirchenhof, which is, has millions of uh, uh, these kind of uh, plants, but we uh, 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 tell the people what is uh, really the, the origin of this kind of uh, activities. Yeah, next one. Um, 
the orchids are of course also one of our interests and especially of Southeast Asia and Indonesia. We have very long uh, relationships with Indonesia and already uh, uh, some colleagues f f very many years ago cooperated either with Kemoraya or with Lipi and so on. So we made also common field trips. And uh, of course, most of you are probably from Kehutanan, but uh, uh, if you are going to the forest and you look at the uh, plants and whether that are the trees or orchids, it doesn't matter. If you are going there f in a certain uh, period, you will see that there are only 10 to 15 percent of the um, plants are flowering or fruiting except the mast years, of course. You have that also every seven years. You have the mass flowering of dipterocarps, as an example, in uh, uh, Kalimantan. I have seen that twice. Uh, but normally, you have only um, uh, very few species flowering. The orchids are actually very difficult to identify because there are probably, we do not know yet, 40,000 species. We say between 20 and 40, so ne nobody knows. Uh, but that means because the vegetative um, parts, so leaves and bulbs, they have not many characters. So, and also the fruits practically have not many characters. So you are depending on the flowers for identification. Certainly we have more modern me methods using DNA analysis and so on. But still, if you want to describe a new species, you need the flowers. So that means actually that you have to collect uh, sterile plants grow them in your botanical garden and wait, hopefully, that they one time will go into flower. So we have quite a lot of collection of that and uh, um, uh, that you know, we collect these uh, uh, species, um, but because very often orchids can be divided, so half of the collection remain, of course, here in Indonesia and half of the collection is uh, sent to, to Leiden in that case. And then we wait, both of us, uh, uh, when it is flowering. And here is one um, uh, um, dendrobium uh, flowering, uh, actually Gudalianum. You have probably heard uh, she is very, very active. Uh, still is older than 80, but still is going uh, in uh, uh, to Europe uh, uh, just uh, this, uh, this week or last week. And uh, so we have described one of the uh, one of the orchid species which were new to science after her memorating her. Next one. Uh, also, this one, uh, Bulbophyllum nocturnum, uh, is described from a specimen in our garden, and this is very interesting uh, because that was the first orchid described which flowered at night which is really very, very unusually. Nobody knew before, and uh, so we were very lucky uh, to, to uh, be able to observe that. And you know Bulbophyllum, it's a really big genus, I think, more than thousands of species. So, next one. Other ones, next one. Of course, uh, also, um, Botanical gardens, of course, function for ex situ conservation. That is also one of our main goals. Uh, we have uh, quite a lot of very rare Nepenthes species, uh, and you see uh, that uh, practically uh, uh, three of them are coming from uh, uh, Indonesia and one from India. And we have a project what is called Arc of Life project. And uh, we have very, uh, some say, I think seven, eight species which are under that, that project. And uh, these are really so rare uh, that we try to uh, cultivate them, of course, also to propagate them. But it is really ver uh, very difficult so far. At least we do not lose. Uh, we did not lose any, any individuals, but to get more uh, 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 individuals is really, really very difficult. Next one. 
Shidia Ibu City is, and Hoya is very uh, fond of it. I know uh, she posts always on LinkedIn in the, the photos of these groups. It's also one of our uh, major uh, uh, groups. Next one. Hoya, as you see, so uh, also quite a, quite a lot of interesting species. Next one. So what are the problems in conservation in botanical gardens? Very often that is the problem taxa, so uh, certain species are not collected really uh, systematically. That means that you are really going to the fields and looking uh, where these species are uh, growing, uh, where they are distributed. Uh, I have an, an example, I did my PhD on Anonesi, as has already told, on Orophea, uh, and I made a revision looking at all plants which I could, could see in the uh, herbarium, uh, where they were collected, I described them and so on. And I had uh, actually identified from, um, from Java uh, one species uh, uh, which I said the last collection has been made in 1930 about. So I thought it was already uh, extinct because it was only found in uh, regions here in uh, East uh, Java. Uh, and um, I thought, um, yeah, uh, this area is so populated and uh, there is no forest left, so it is probably extinct. So I wrote that also in my thesis. Then many years ago, uh, I think 30 years ago, I have been appointed uh, uh, in Universitas Erlanga in Surabaya. And students said to me, Paul, would you like to go with us to a, I no, don't remember the, 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 the name anymore, to the, to the, to, to the mountains uh, to, to show the, the flora? And I said, yes. So we went there. And um, then uh, they said, oh, tomorrow morning, very early, we go to the, to the rem remnants of the forest. OK, I was ready. We went there. And they moved very fast. And I looked around and I said, the first tree that I saw was this Orophea. And I said, stop, 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 stop. Uh, so, uh, and then I saw at least 20 different trees of that, what I thought already extinct species in, in nature. So for me, uh, that was one of the reasons that I started to think just do something also systematically so that you really know. and are not depending on, 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 on bad data. Of course, uh, we are also um, uh, doing exchange uh, through gardens, but the, very often the problem is then uh, it is easy to uh, distribute cuttings, but that is always the same gene pool. So meaning uh, if you are looking uh, in the different gardens and you do not use uh, seeds, there are identical clones of everything. So uh, that is not really biodiversity conservation. That is only clone conservation in that, that respect. So we have also to think about that. Uh, and that is a reason because cuttings are preferred because it's easier, faster, and so on. So also this kind of information we have to think about whether we would like to do that in future. Next one. Luckily, in the uh, last uh, years, uh, we have new uh, chain, uh, chances with new technology. Um, at the moment, uh, the uh, uh, genome analysis is relatively easy and cheap. If you compare it to 10 years ago, uh, I think uh, uh, I still remember one of my first students doing it. Uh, it costs really immense much of money. And now we have really uh, easy tests and extraction methods and so on. 
Luckily, also in the last years, uh, the um, databases of various gardens has been improved. And that means you can also, if you have students are doing it yourself, you analyze, you can analyze these uh, uh, databases and then see where are the gaps. So uh, if you have a very uh, species where you know they might be uh, going extinct and you see they are not in the database, then you can look for that and preferently uh, collect those. Next one. What, how we can proceed in future, that is my vision a little bit, of course. We should really have very close cooperations with gardens, but also with herbaria, because the herbaria have the dried plants, and with these pl dried plants, you know the history of the, 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 the plants, because uh, usually all the information is there, where it has been collected, and so on, and when, in which month, and so forth. So that is very important, but of course, not only in the region, but internationally, because uh, um, you have also to include research centers and universities, because there are the young people who uh, would be probably interested to start on these kind of studies. And of course, I would, would really like to have a, a identification list of a priority list of the most endangered species uh, according to the countries. We have that actually in, in, in the Netherlands. Uh, and that makes also much sense. So you can probably concentrate on those species which are yeah, under real big pressure. I also always advocate to focus on some groups in the gardens because uh, with uh, living plants you are so depending on the people who are looking after them. Uh, if, if you have a person who is not interested in, in that group, you know tomorrow it's dead, you know. Uh, uh, but of course you have also to distribute to reduce the risk. But so you have to think always what kind of uh, uh, um, uh, plants or taxa you really want to uh, study and to cultivate. Next one. In science, there is, of course, also new approaches. I think that is a really um, a new development within science. Um, you see here, actually, a project we have carried out, or still carrying out, uh, within a PhD project in, in Leiden Bo Botanical Garden. Uh, it is a PhD project on pavement plants. Actually, that are the plants which are growing in urban areas directly in front of your, your house, uh, between the, the, the pavement, in the pavement. And what our students is now in doing is, is two aspects, actually, of course, identifying the, the, the plants which are there, because now with climate uh, change, of course, new comers are coming, in our case, from the southern Europe, like Italy, Spain, and so on. But we also want to have another aim, is actually to include the citizens. So uh, the, the reason for that is, if you uh, include uh, people locally uh, who are uh, living in the cities, you can get as a PhD student or as a researcher many more data. In this case, we have already the experience uh, that uh, um, uh, she has more than uh, 6,000 data from Groningen to Leiden to Amsterdam to uh, Utrecht in small villages and so on. So this she could not do really because if you would think about the time, the costs uh, to move uh, there and so on, so on. So that is um, uh, very difficult. And in uh, citizen science, uh, we try, of course, not only that the, that the uh, people are uh, uh, collecting the data, but also in a later phase, help with um, analyzing, uh, analyzing the data. So that is the, in the best case. It's not so easy, uh, but uh, uh, it is possible. And of course, one of the thing is 
to combat plant blindness. You know, uh, even in your country, I'm quite sure, people very often are much more attracted by animals than by plants, except if you would like to eat that, then still okay. But you see in big cities, um, people really do not know where your fruit is coming from. If I asked uh, school ki uh, children in, in, uh, in Holland, uh, uh, where are bananas coming from? They say, of course, supermarket. Where, where is the milk coming from? Supermarket. They have no idea that the producers are a plant in one case and the cow in the other, uh, other case. And even their parents sometimes have a problem with that. So that means, that is what I mean with combat plant blindness that is really that people get more aware of that and that they know uh, or will know uh, that uh, if you are looking and even in pavement plants that you find plant there which you could, can probably eat. Nobody knows anymore because everybody is uh, buying uh, everything in the supermarket and you will not get these plants uh, in the supermarket so uh, that is what is one of our ideas behind it. Next one. Of course, I think, um, who has no mobile phone, no uh, handphone? 100% covered by handphone. Okay, me included, so uh, that's okay. So you see, you, technology has changed the, so the society immensely. Next question, who likes to read a book? Not many, seemingly. Where do you get your information from? If you, if you go to classes or... Hmm. <laughs> Google, yeah, website. If you... If, if here I have to, to order a taxi, I don't phone, any, phone anymore, I take a, and, uh, have to take an app. If I have to, to, to go to the airport tomorrow and uh, uh, need uh, the, the, the seat, of course, via the website. There's no paper boarding pass anymore. So, technique has changed our lives rapidly. And luckily, I would say, um, also we as botanists or biologists are sometimes a little bit conservative. Uh, but I think luckily uh, also people are thinking about uh, new techniques and I have just uh, 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 show you uh, two apps, uh, identification tools. Uh, Ops Identify is a typical one from the Netherlands uh, uh, and if you make just photos uh, it is, uh, uh, you will give uh, the uh, identification, say the name. But the problem very often is, of course, uh, if you have no idea, you do not know whether the app gives you the right name. In this case, I must say, we, we did, I think, in my eyes at least, a very good job, because behind Ops Identify, actually, there are many um, uh, experts. So if you um, download your photograph, you will get a name back. But this photograph will also, in many cases, will be checked by really experts people. And if it is wrong, you will get a message back, it is wrong. We have checked it, this is the correct name. So I think that approach is very good because otherwise, as a user, you have no idea what is going on and you cannot learn also. And I think uh, that is uh, a very good approach. Next one. So what do we need actually also? Of course, we have lack of data, scientific data for assessing uh, ecosystem functions. But of course, we also need basic data from natural and urban environments because you know, uh, it is said that in 2050, 
I think 75 of uh, uh, 75 percent of the population will live in cities and I know uh, know of course of your big project here in Indonesia to transfer your capital to Kalimantan so that would be a very good um, uh, thing to look at the urban flora urban green and so on and of course, very often taxonomic and functional diversity of biodiversity networks and correlations are insufficiently known. So also there you have to do more research activity. Next one. So what are the consequences of that? I think you, one should invest in national and international facilities to study biodiversity and e ecology. And I think we as universities and you as faculties, me included of course, have also really a big impact uh, and we can hopefully um, uh, convince uh, politicians to do that. Then of course I think uh, close cooperation on national as well as international level is really needed and therefore I'm so happy that uh, Leiden University as well as UGM is really uh, very eager to have close cooperation on various levels in various fields. So that's I think it's top. Um, but of course not only in the university is important but also green organizations also you here in uh, in the in indonesia you have i think many uh, in uh, 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 green organization i just uh, uh, talked yesterday to you and he said yeah there is also a orchid uh, association in ugm you know and these kind of things is really important to to, to, to cooperate with because these are the freaks actually who probably know much more than I. So, and they can help you as a scientist also to increase uh, your quality of data or information. And uh, at last uh, I said establishing biodiversity XXL, meaning in my case I think uh, I would really like that more people, institutions, uh, organizations are really coming together to show everybody and especially our, our um, uh, normal people how important uh, biodiversity is. Next one. I think that it was Trima Kasibanyak, and I hope there are still some questions. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Paul. Now time for discussion, but maybe only 10, 20 minutes, yeah, yeah. because Professor Paul will move to Faculty of Biology for many workshops there. So, oh, before, and the question and answer session. Welcome to our guest lecture. Uh, I will mention some guests, Professor Paul. Uh, Bapak Komsatun Rohmaningrum. Kemudian dari Gunung Merbabu, uh, Ibu, mohon maaf Ibu Komsatun. Kemudian Ibu Santi Pratiwi dari BKSDA. Kemudian Bapak Raditya Nugraha dari DLH DIY. Kemudian hadir pula dari BPPSK. Bapak Kuswantoro Ahadi, kemudian dari Pembangunan Ekoregion Jawa ada Ibu Sri, kemudian Bapak Aji, Bapak Aji, dan dari KPH Yogyakarta ada Bapak Setia Wahyu Purnama. Yang merbabu sebentar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, iya. Sudah masuk, sudah masuk. Terima kasih banyak ya. Dari BPPSIK Bapak Dwi Prabowo. Yes. Terima kasih Bapak Ibu yang sudah kersorawo join di pertemuan general lecture. Uh, mohon maaf di dalam menyebutkan nama-nama yang salah tadi. Sekali lagi mohon maaf. Oke. Okay. Uh, we have maybe one or two session for question and answer. Uh, 
maybe for from the first for our student, maybe doctor, master, or undergraduate student, please raise hand if you have question for Professor Paul. Okay, please, Mbak Dian. Oke, okay, cek. Oke, okay, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Agben Urbani from General University 2022. And uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you and greatly appreciation to Mr. Kessler for all the best uh, presentations and that was uh, give us more insightful and of course the information about the botanical garden for us thank you so much Krista. but here i am to um give you some questions about something that could be some you know i'm just curious about that and please give us more information about that um, you just mentioned about the what are the problems of conservation in botanical garden before and you just mentioned about often cuttings are preferred so my question is could you um, give us more information or a further explanation about this statement and maybe the mechanism or how this action could affect our conservation in of course botanical garden or anything you want and of course there, is there any regulation to stop these actions so far and is there possibility the best alternative solution for this i think that's all thank you so much and thank you thank you professor but maybe one by one is okay. yeah, yeah i think one by one yeah uh, very thank you uh, for a uh, good question. I think uh, you uh, listened very carefully. Uh, that's very good. Uh, I think the problem is you have two problems, in, especially in uh, European botanical garden, the surface of the gardens are relatively small. I didn't mention it to, uh, today, yet uh, our garden has only a surface of less of three hectares. So it is two thirds is about uh, uh, outside garden and one third is our, our glass houses. So that means actually we have no space and room for many individuals uh, of um, the plants. So that means uh, actually, of course, uh, I would not concentrate uh, my garden on tree species of Southeast Asia. Because you know, uh, if, if you do a Maranti, uh, it grows up to 35 or 40 meters. My glass house is max 20, so it makes no sense. Uh, I would actually like to have one, but um, I don't have. Uh, so that means, and you have seen in, uh, in my slide, uh, that we concentrate on, on mainly herb, herb uh, things. And also there, uh, you, uh, if you look at Nepenthes, you ma just make cuttings and then you, you propagate it. But that, the reason for that is that we do not get so much input so from outside, so from various regions. And the, one of the problems nowadays is that there are also very many regulations. Uh, so from exporting plants or importing plants, you have Nagoya protocol, you have CITES, you have uh, national rules, uh, laws, and so on. So that makes life not easier. And therefore, I at least uh, uh, plea that within one country, like in yours, uh, please distribute uh, many things uh, so that the chance that it becoming extinct gets smaller because within a country is still easier than if you have to uh, export it. Uh, on the other hand, um, we have a good example, ex actually zoological gardens. You know you have really uh, breeding programs for the panda, for the tiger, for the elephant, whatsoever. And they are really very keen and have really good programs to choose for the right mother, to choose the right father, and to transport and to exchange. And 
Unfortunately, I think we do not internationally. Yeah? I mean, we got in the Netherlands two pandas uh, in the Netherlands from China, you know, and then, of course, if they're, they're small ones, they are get going back. So they have very good rules and exceptions to rules to scope with. And I always think uh, that is a very good example. And to come back on your, your uh, cutting things, this is really because the stock we have is limited. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I would say certainly if you start uh, in, in for a certain species or a certain genus, look around for the diverse, diverse genetic background of these so that you really know it is from various regions, if possible, uh, from uh, uh, certainly from various plants and so on, and that is very important. You know, we have some species which are male or female, and we have only uh, the males uh, in the garden, so you cannot do anything with that, you know. Okay, thank you, Prof. Ada saat saya masuk ke landa tiga greenhouse hortus botanicus leden. Saya sedikit teradu-adu emosi saya. Kenapa? Karena saya melihat kantong semar. <laughs> Anggrek. Kaktus. Pisang. <laughs> ya, <Yeah>, true. <laughs> Itu pohon-pohon kita. Saya membawa kantong semar dari Kalimantan. Ke Jogja saja tidak berani. Tetapi saya menjumpainya di Hortus Botanicus Leiden di Belanda. Tantangan bagi kita. Oke, okay, the second question. Selamat datang. Saya sapa juga Profesor Erni Hermayani. Asis Abrefus Dean, Faculty of Agriculture Technology. Dean of Faculty of Agriculture Technology. Thank you very much for your extraordinary lecture, Professor Kessler. And my question is, uh, we know that maintaining diversity of our diet is important to our health. And the absence of diversified nutrient-dense diet is crucial factor in malnutrition. However, currently, agrobiodiversity is declining across countries because uh, where the industrial food system has encouraged genetic uniformity. Yeah. We know that uh, for 5,000 plants used as our diet, only three <laughs> provide 50% of our calories, yes. And how do you tackle, how, I, I need your opinion, how we can tackle this uh, declining agrobiodiversity from the uh, challenge, global challenge, since the global diet now is more uniform. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so, so much for this really interesting question. Actually, that has already to do what I uh, said earlier. Uh, Patus mentioned the, the, the Pisang. Uh, that is one of those. If you are looking in our supermarkets in whole of Europe, or probably also a whole of, uh, of North America, it's what we call the Chiquita uh, banana. Mm. It is one clone nothing else and if you are coming here i always i'm really very happy to see that at least somewhere in the pasa or where you can see small ones red ones big ones small ones one uh, very man is the other you you do in the fat and so on so i really like that personally but you are totally right the trend is to uniform these kind of things and that has to make I think that has to do that our uh, population is concentrated in cities. So if you are uh, living in a, in a village, the chance that in your backyard you can grow 10 varieties is much higher. What can you do uh, uh, 10, meet, uh, 10, 10 uh, levels high uh, in the city? Nothing. So that I think, but of course you asked my question, what can we do? And I think what we can do is there are two things. 
to inform people, to say, yes, there are these varieties, there are these different things, but at the second time, we must also communicate that, that these kind of things will get uh, more expensive. It will not be so cheap anymore. And that we see already in the Netherlands, if you, would, if you will buy biological fruits or species which are from, from old trees or something like that, they, uh, they are at least 50% more expensive than the apple from, from a supermarket. So I think that is the only uh, thing you can do. Uh, that, is, <clears throat> that is also a very uh, good question. Uh, she asked over uh, uh, conservation of underutilized uh, species or varieties, whatsoever races. Um, I think that is a good, good plan. Uh, in many countries you have uh, research centers actually which specialize in these kind of things. So um, I remember in, in, in some part of uh, Germany you have special organizations which care for old races of apples as an example. And I think, I think you, you know in the Philippines is a big institute for the rice uh, um, thing. Uh, so uh, I think you, you should really look for, uh, to, to um, establish these kind of centers, I would, would, uh, would say. Thank you, Professor Paul, and very interesting question from Professor Ernie. Pada saat saya masuk Taman Nasional, Bapak Ibu sekalian dan hutan-hutan di Indonesia, di seluruh Indonesia. Saya sedih ketika ketemu banyak orang dan mereka tidak tahu beberapa jenis pohon yang ada di dalam. Jangankan masyarakat, petugas kehutanan pun, mohon maaf, misalnya peh, itu juga ada yang belum tahu, mohon maaf. Jadi kita kaya, tetapi kita tidak tahu kekayaan kita apa saja. Benar apa tidak? Nah ini PR kita bersama, kita mari menjadi orang kaya yang tahu kekayaan kita. Mohon maaf Bapak Ibu yang dari Dinas Kehutanan dan sebagainya, mari bekerjasama dengan fakultas, kita sama-sama sebagaimana disampaikan tadi dan pertanyaan tadi itu, kita konservasi biodiversity kita. Oke, okay, the last question. Oke, okay, please. Oh, she was very fast. <laughs> very fast. Just <laughs> raising her head. <laughs> Okay, thank you for the opportunity. Introduce my name is Amelia Norpuspita from Silviculture 2022. And here I have a question for Prof. Kisler. I'm curious about what motivated you to be interested in the food of botanical gardens and how do you attract people's attention to know more about the botanical garden so that it can be a motivation for us. Thank you. Uh, thank you. In Alpha faculty, we don't have a subject of botanical garden. So maybe I, I will knowledge. try yeah. uh, shortly. Um, thanks for the questions. Uh, it's good. Uh, I hope I could motivate you already with my talk uh, to uh, look more carefully to botanic gardens, arboreta, herbaria, and so on, and certainly to the flora. Uh, what m me personally motivated was actually I never wanted to do something with plants. I wanted to be become a director of a zoological garden. So, and now I am here. Uh, so what is my motivation to move uh, to plants? Uh, but that is a long story and I don't want to explain, but uh, it, it was during my, my study actually uh, that my uh, professor and my uh, docents actually were so enthusiastic about um, uh, uh, especially Asian flora that I really wanted to join. So that was number one. Then I moved from uh, Germany to uh, uh, Holland uh, uh, 35 years ago and also to Leiden at Herbarium at that time. And then I had a postdoc uh, grant work um, from the German Research Society where they funded also one field trip to Indonesia. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, um, so I went in 88 uh, not only to Indonesia but also to other countries and we went really to uh, various uh, areas of uh, still then primary forest 
and I was so uh, motivated and emotional uh, that uh, I was really uh, thinking that is something for life. Uh, then I did very many um, uh, projects in uh, uh, in Indonesia, from uh, Lore Lindo to uh, uh, Danau Toba, from West East Kalimantan, South Kalimantan, and so on. And I was still always motivated more. And uh, 16 years ago, 17 years ago, I have been appointed director of the uh, Botanical Netherlands. And then also our collection were already from Southeast Asia. So that fitted very, very well with me and my ideas. And I think uh, um, um, here it's, I'm really happy also to be here and to, to work together to uh, save this biodiversity, uh, not only uh, for, for yourself, but also for the generations to come. And you are the young ones who can help to really organize that, and I hope you will do. Thank you very much. Please give big applause for Professor Paul. Uh, because of limited time, and also we, we try to provide more time for both season, and also for discussion, because we have some guests. So we need more time. And please love our trees. Please identi identify and know our trees. Okay, thank you very much and the time. But Dian, please. Thank okay, you very much. Thank you. And now it's time to the organizing committee uh, to present token of appreciation. And please re invite it on stage again Prof. Kessler and the Dean of Faculty of Forestry, Insignor Sigit Sunarta Eswood, MPP, SDEPU, to present the token to Prof. D Paul Kessler. <laughs> So also with this, um, I have not as big as for the dean, uh, but <laughs> as a little bit smaller one, otherwise it would be too heavy in my bag. Uh, I have a call, what we call a mini git, so a mini identification folder. And this is, this is also for the pavement plans, but you can have it as an idea whether you can probably use it as basics for a mini gits 
for your arboretum here. Yeah, of course, so boss. Student, they, master and student. yes, master and doctoral student city, and joined also that thing. So, but they, she has, uh, they, they have already seen it. So, one photograph, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. So please, thank you. You can join also and show other people. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to photo session. Uh, kepada Prof. Eni Hamayanti, Prof. Naim, kami minta untuk maju ke depan. Nanti kita fotonya dari sisi sebelah. Uh, untuk yang di belakang berdiri atau di kepada seluruh peserta diminta untuk berdiri. Prof Naim, Prof Maya bisa maju ke depan. Prof Ganis, ada Pak Sandi, Pak Bu Adri, Pak. Mbak Sawitri, Pak Seno, Bu Adri, Bu Diana, Pak Sandy, Mbak Sawitri maju ke depan. Diana, yang di belakang bisa berdiri. Pak Sandy mungkin agak ke sisi utara. Yang utara agak merapat, Pak geser merapat, yang sisi selatan merapat, merapat lagi agak miring, ya. Thank you very much, and ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, now we come to the end of this event. We would like to extend our gratitude to the Honorable Professor Dr. Paul Kessler. Thank you very much. And we would like to say thank you to the moderator, Pa Atus. Thank you very much. And me, Romadiana Diani, as the MC for this general lecture, on behalf of the committee, we are all very grateful that we can gather here to improve the academic atmo atmosphere and global talk about the challenges and the opportunities of conserving biodiversity in Indonesia and throughout the world. And saya tutup dengan pantun. Tuku Tomat Neng Pasar Paing, thank you so much for coming. Terima kasih atas atensi dan waktu yang telah diluangkan.
Selamat pagi dan selamat beraktivitas kembali. Bila itu, Fikwal Hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.